y'all, Mountain Goat here. And today I wanna to be talking about the big three. In 2024, I'll be through hiking the Appalachian Trail as chaplain for the Holston Conference of the United Methodist Church. And it's really important that I go prepared. So I thought I'd share with you the big three. Now, I've just said that twice. What is the big three? The big three are the three most important things that a backpacker takes on a trip. Their pack, their tent, and their sleep system. And so I wanted to share with you today what I have chosen for my AT through hike. First of all, I want to share with you the pack that I will be carrying. Now, this year I'll be carrying the Durston, I mean, excuse me, the ULA circuit uh, uh, backpack. It's about, I think a 55 liter pack. It'll hold up to 30, 35 pounds comfortably. The one reason why I chose this over some of the ultralight, other ultralight packs, is because of its really nice suspension system in the back. Um, it gives me really good support, and it, it's about a half of an ounce heavier than my other ultralight pack, but I've chosen to take this one just because of the comfort. It's uh, super durable, and um, I think it's gonna be a good choice. So this is the ULA Circuit. My tent that I'll be taking um, is the Durston X Mid One Pro. It is a one person tent. Uh, super easy to set up though, and really, really light. Uh, so if I'm adding half an ounce to my pack, I'm definitely taking over a pound off of my tent. So that's a pretty good exchange in my opinion. So the Durston X Mid One Pro is a trekking pole tent. It's the Pro is made with Dyneema. Uh, the regular Durston X Mid One is not made with Dyneema. It's a great value and it's still an awesome, awesome tent. So I highly recommend both of those. I was able to set this tent up the very first time I ever tried it in seven minutes. Um, and it's getting faster every single time I try it. So love this tent. It is a one person. Um, it's a little bit narrow on the sides, but there's tons of headroom above my head and on my at my feet. And I love the vestibule, super big. It comes way out and uh, that way I can store things on the outside if I have to, but I don't plan to. So the next, so that's one circuit ULA, two Durston X Med, and three is my sleep system. So when I am on the AT, I'm starting in March. So it's gonna be chilly. And so I wanna make sure that I'm really prepared. So what I've, what I'm taking is I have a Z-Lite um, insulated pad underneath because that'll add at least one R value to my insulation. Then my air pad is the Big Agnes Air Core Ultra uh, insulated. I am very happy with this pad. It, it's not really noisy for me because I rotate like a rotisserie chicken at night. Um, and uh, it's about a 4.7 R value. So with that and the Z-Lite together, I'm getting about five, five and a half R value. So I'm super happy with that. In addition, I'm taking this incredible sleeping bag. Thank you to the Holston Conference of the United Methodist Church for this. But this is the Western Mountaineering Terralite sleeping bag. Awesome sleeping bag. Now it is rated 25 degrees. So I'm gonna be in some teen uh, nights, uh, especially in the Smokies. So what am I gonna do? I have a liner that I'm taking as well as some, my puppy jacket and things like that. So that's what I'll be doing. The big debate right now is a pillow. Do I even take a pillow? Some ultralight packers don't even take a pillow. They just sleep on top of their uh, pack or they just will sleep on top of their puffy, extra clothing, whatever they've got. That's an option for me and I'm highly considering that. But I do have some other, like I have a Sea to Summit small little air pillow. One thing I have noticed with air pillows is that when I sleep on them, because of the air, my head tends to get a little bit chilly. So that's an option, that's, that's a consideration. I may just sleep on top of other things that would warm up faster. Um, but for now, this is my sleep system. So this is the Western Mountaineering sleeping bag with the Big Agnes uh, Ultra uh, underneath and the Z-Lite as well. I'm gonna use my Z-Lite also for 
sitting around, um, around the fire, when I take breaks for lunch and breakfast, things like that. This is my big three. Now, I wanna show you some options though, because um, for what, one, back, one thing a backpacker always knows is to always have a backup and it needs to serve multiple purposes. So um, I have a backup backpack, I have a backup tent, and I have a backup sleep system. These are my good old faithfuls that I have kept and I thought I'd share them with you because they're a great option for you on trail. So let's go this way. So the next thing I wanna talk about is a pulled tent. Now my Durston X Mid is super light because there are no poles. And um, for three pounds, I can get a really nice pulled tent made by Nemo. This is the Nemo Hornet. I've had it for a couple of years. It's good and faithful. Love this tent. It's a two person. Well, they say it's two person. Really, it's like a one and a half, but I have tons of room in here and I've got some really nice privacy as well. Now, I love this tent, been with it for, been with this tent uh, backpacking multiple times. Um, right now, the other option instead of a Nemo Hornet would be a Nemo uh, Dragonfly. Also, super tent, super lightweight, but I chose to start off with the Durston just because of weight. I am, the Durston is estimated at 17 ounces. Now that's not including some of their, tra the, the steaks and things like that, but I, I reduced over a pound um, with everything for the Durston versus what I have for my sleep system with a pole. Now, but if you like poles, a pole tent, this is the way to go. Nemo is awesome. Nemo Hornet and Nemo Dragonfly. So, um, my optional pack. Now, like I said, my ULA circuit pack is a half ounce heavier than my ultralight pack. That is my backup. And my that pack is my good old faithful Gossamer gear. Gossamer gear, this pack is like two pounds, super lightweight. I love, it has, it's like a 60, 60, I think it's a 60 liter. It's awesome. It's been with me for a couple of years now. It's done some through hikes um, on some shorter trails. I love that you can take the sit pad out and sit on it. So that takes away any type of extra sit pad that I might need. Um, lots of pockets on the outside. So. The ULA circuit's what I'm starting with, but as a backup, I am gonna have my Gossamer gear at home, ready to be shipped in case I need it. Now, so this is the, the Nemo tent, the Gossamer gear back, uh, pack, and so let's talk about my backup sleep system. Now, I'm starting out where it's gonna be really cold, but once, I, once June and July comes, it's gonna be really warm. And so I do have the option of going to something a little bit lighter. Now, I have a really old, like I've got this like five, six, seven years ago and I have worn it out, but it's a good sleeping bag. It's actually the REI Flash. Um, yeah, it's losing some feathers right now, but when it's really hot outside and all I need is just something to lay over me, this is an option. Yeah, I know, I don't have a quilt. Everybody suggests a quilt, but you know, you use what you have, and this is what I have. I have decided to go with a mummy uh, to start out with just because it's so cold, and I am very sensitive to my head and my ears getting cold. So I'm just, I've decided not to do that. I am gonna stick with a mummy, and this uh, REI Flash is an old-timey mummy sleeping bag as well. Will I eventually go to a quilt for the summer? Maybe, because they're really good. Now, um, let's talk about the air pad underneath. This air, bat, air pad is also a Big Agnes, but this is the Big Agnes Q-Core SLX, and this one has a much lower R value. In other words, it better be warm outside before I sleep on this thing, because I do tend to get cold. So that's why, it's, that's why I'm going with the orange one over here versus the green one, simply because of the R value. Um, you'll notice this one doesn't have the Z light because that Z, the Z pad, that thing's ind indestructible. That'll probably stay with me the whole time. So, um, yeah, so I have, this is, would be more of a summer. Now, one thing I want to, I do want to also share with you. Uh, this is a Big Agnes bag 
that blows up my air pads, the orange one as well as the green one. And I really like it. It's been tried and true. And it takes up, look at that, so much air. You just fill it up. I can blow up each one of these air pads, like just doing this eight times and it's done. And this has always been what I've had. But I think I'm gonna go a little bit bougie. And so this time I think I am gonna go for, um, I'm gonna try the flex tail. Now the flex tail is a battery operated air pump and I've blown up both of these today and I've blown up this air pad uh, three times just on one charge. So that's pretty good. So we'll see how this flex tail works, but um, I might step off screen, but the flex tail is this very simple. It's just, see how small that is? So this versus a dry bag. Now a dry bag, this would make sense, right? Except I just found out this year that this big Agnes is not exactly waterproof. Here I was thinking all along for years that this was a waterproof dry bag, but it's not. So it's water resistant, but that's one of the things that I'm, I'm considering. So for right now, I'm gonna start out with this flex tail and this will be my backup. Like I said, this is all backup, but this is what I'm taking. This is my big three. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe.